Hey guys. Do I have any Petty fans out there? Every time Tom Petty comes on, what do we say, Scott? What do we say? You gotta get over here. Miss Tom here. Petty. What do you say? Miss Tom Petty. You miss anybody else out there, Miss Petty? Anyway, I love Petty. And I heard that come on and I wanted you guys to hear it with me. We had many, many, many a great concert with Tom Petty. Okay, anyway. All right, so we are here to cook with you today. I am Melissa Curry, Dream Life Total Wellness. And what we're sharing with you today is a pan-seared swordfish and a cauliflower mash, all made simple and easy because if you know anything about me, that's how we like it, simple and easy, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get started today. So I have, uh, I'm gonna start out, and this is a class for my Salad Master owners, so I'm gonna teach them some Salad Master techniques, but you can, you know, use other tools if you choose, and we'll do that. All right, so we're gonna start out with my cauliflower mashed potatoes, and I'm going to, I like to use cauliflower because Scott and I lost a bunch of weight recently. When I say recently, it took us two, two and a half years to get into habits that enabled us to maintain our weight loss. And he lost 20, 30 pounds and I lost 20. And shifting from mashed potatoes to cauliflower mashed potatoes was one of the shifts. So we got rid of the carbs, we got rid of the sugars. So I've got my cauliflower here all ready to go. And I'm gonna use my salad master machine. I think having the right tools makes everything easier. Example, Vitamix, Cutco knives, right? salad master, and a salad master machine. So it's easy to use. Those of you that have one at home, you simply lay your hand inside and you put your thumb here. Not here, because that's where the blades are. So on the side, okay, you take the male and the female piece, you simply line those up and turn, and it will connect. Okay, so safe here. So I'm gonna take my cauliflower, I'm gonna cut it into a little bit smaller of a piece. Okay, you can throw the whole thing through there or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is just take it like this and you plop it right into the back, throw your, your safeguard over, anchor your pinky and thumb, and there you go. We're chopping our cauliflower up into the number three cone, into the, cauli into the, um, the, the uh, what do we call that? The culinary basket, the uh, church pan, because there's holes in it's holy, right? So, <laughs> just gonna take that and chop it up. Okay, really easy and simple. You get your workout when you do this. Cauliflower is a great low caloric food. I love to make cauliflower steaks, right? It's a cruciferous vegetable, so it's a great cancer fighter. And I just think it's really delicious. If you have kids at home, that don't necessarily like cauliflower or mashed potatoes. All you do is you mix a potato with cauliflower, blend the two together, and now you've slipped some things in, right, that your children don't know are there, and they are a beautiful flavor. I've put on the number two comb, and I've taken my onion, which I'm leaving the little hairy butt on, and I'm gonna take the flat side where I've cut it, put it against the flat of the machine, right, hold my hand flat. I'm not gonna do things like this. I'm gonna hold it flat. And I'm just gonna push, and this is going to easily, the number two cone, take this, the, the onion out of the skin. It'll do that with a jicama, a cantaloupe, anything, right? There we go. Now, that was pretty tough and time consuming. All I'm gonna do, I'm just kidding, I've been on for a whole five minutes. I'm gonna take and put my cauliflower inside of my three quart over here. So I'm just gonna set it inside of there. Okay, I got a little bit of water in the bottom, and I'm gonna turn it to medium, okay? And I'm listening for a steady click, and when it steady clicks, I'm going to turn it to low. So I'm gonna start on medium, the valve clicks at 185, and I'm gonna turn it to low, and then I'm gonna go. And my cauliflower potatoes, mashed potatoes, should be done in about, takes about eight minutes to click, that's your magic number, and then you come back and you turn it down for about another six to eight to 10 minutes, depending on what you're cooking, and your food will be done perfectly. So you could do your broccoli, your acorn squash. Today I'm doing cauliflower mashed potatoes with some extra additions at the end that make them mm, so good, okay? Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move my little machine, my beautiful salad master machine, look at that, out of the way, and I'm going to set it right there. 
And now I'm going to teach you how to make, do, do, do. can you see that? Yes, you can. How to make a swordfish. So I'm gonna grab the swordfish because I don't have it setting out. I have it in the refrigerator. Like chicken and fish, you wanna keep them cold. Okay. And Scott, what did you marinate this with? So Scott marinated the swordfish for us. Look at that beautiful piece of fish. You don't want to eat too much swordfish because of? Because it has mercury in it. So, so how it one, gets mercury one, is one, it's a big fish. And a big fish eats little fish. And the little fish are full of mercury, right? Well, it, it accumulates as you get larger and larger. Anyway. Kind of like us. Things accumulate in our body right. as we get larger and larger. So you can see it's a nice, nice bright color of meat. It's kind of pink. And it's better if it's not frozen. It'll taste better. It won't be as fishy. Do you want to know something funny? So I was watching a cooking show the other day and it was Ann Burrell and she was teaching worst cooks in America. And she said to them, if it smells fishy, it's probably not good. So, you know, if you get your fish out and it smells fishy, guess what? Probably not good. So anyway, I, I mixed mirin and I used yellow um, uh, soy paste and I mixed Ooh. in a little bit of garlic. That'll be nice and umami flavor. And I put it all over, all of the sides, bottom, top, and let it sit for about an hour. So mirin, just in case you don't know, mirin's like a kind of an Asian style wine that you can use, right? So that sounds delicious. I'm so excited. So you could serve this over the top of, like if you wanted to take cauliflower, it's kind of an Asian flair, and you could put cauliflower with shallots and cilantro and a sesame dressing, sesame, and that would be amazing. Today though, I'm serving it different. So I've got my skillet. I always like to keep water nearby when I'm cooking so I can take it and test to see the heat of the pan. Now that danced quite beautifully. You guys can see that like a little BB. If it just sizzles, things are going to stick. Now, fish does not have a lot of fat in it. Whereas if you're cooking chicken or pork or steak, they're loaded with fat. So you don't have to use oil. But with the fish, because I want to get a nice crisp to it and it doesn't have a lot of fat, I'm actually going to put a little bit of beautiful coconut oil inside. Okay? I like to use coconut oil because it has a higher um, flash point. So it doesn't take a lot. I'm just going to put a little bit down there in the bottom and move it around. Okay, now I'm gonna let it kind of heat up for a second. Yes, I'm using metal in my pans, it doesn't hurt it. Okay, and let it heat up for a second. I'm not gonna test it with water. I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> you test it with water and oil, you know what happens. Goes everywhere. One of my friends posted a picture of Lucille Ball. So cute, I know my sister loves Lucille Ball. She and I went there for her 30th birthday. Sis, we won't say how long ago that was, will we? But <laughs> I wasn't even 30 yet. She's always going to be older than me. <laughs> so um, we took this and we've got it nicely heated up. But anyway, so I was talking about um, um, oils and somehow I got to Disneyland. Does anybody remember how we got there? Anyway, uh, so you take a little bit of oil and you put it in here and it's pretty much warm. I'm going to take my fish. I'm take my thing, and you're gonna hear a nice, beautiful sizzle as it goes in, okay? So let me get that little guy up there going. Ooh, he's kind of stuck to the bottom. Okay, and sizzle. Oh, that's what I was talking about, throwing water in Lucille Ball. And so she posted a picture of Lucille Ball and my husband calls me Lucille Ball in the kitchen. Not quite sure why. I think it might have something to do with one day I turned on the blender and I didn't have the top on and you know what happens when you do something like that. Well, it makes a mess and it goes everywhere. So that's why you don't put water and oil together, okay? So I've got my fish going. I'm actually just, I don't want it to pop everywhere. So I'm just gonna kind of lay this across the top. And um, if my Siri was here, which I've got Scott Siri because you guys have my Siri, I'm gonna set a little timer for about two minutes because that's about all I want it to be cooking on this side to get it nice and brown, and then I'm gonna check it. So now in the interim, right, um, well, we'll just talk for a minute because then I'm gonna flip it and we'll see how it's going. But I wanna show you this other dressing that I'm making for you guys today, it's really good. So I'm gonna take my little bowl, okay? I did this for my chipotle honey uh, shrimp tacos and I thought it was so good that I would drizzle it over the top of the fish today over a bed of lettuce. So Scott, if you'll get me out some um, cabbage, I'll use cabbage, I'll chop up some cabbage and do it like that, okay? 
So then now I'm gonna take some veganaise, which is a vegan mayonnaise. Okay, I know it's not a vegan meal because we're obviously doing fish, cooking fish, but I don't like to use mayonnaise. I just think this tastes better. And I don't really like to use eggs and things. I just like the flavor of this better. Okay, I was plant-based for solid for two and a half years, vegetarian off and on for 25 years. I'm now plant-based certified through E. Cornell University. And you know, we're an affiliate partner for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And so I know how to take all the recipes and convert them into uh, food that is plant-based. So, but I still hung on to a lot of the things that I picked up from plant-based, right, in my cooking, even if I do add fish or something. So I'm gonna take one, two tablespoons-ish of veganaise, and then I love to cheat in my cooking and make life easy. So my chef Vinny, who by the way, I just posted a Chapino cooking class with him, and you can cook along, I'm gonna post the recipe, and he's Italiano, so it's going to be a very, very, very authentic Italian Chapino, okay? And he's, a, I'm sorry, he graduated from the CIA in New York, so my point was, and check the website, he's there, Dream Life Total Wellness, is that he even uses the cheat that I use, which is the frozen garlic that you can buy at Trader Joe's. So I'm gonna throw in a cube of that that's been melting, and then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to um, take and put two tablespoons of water, okay, in this dressing. And that'll kind of thin it out really nicely. Oh, I hear that ringing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that aside for a moment. Can you guys hear the alarm? I love to cook with Siri. She's like my watch out that I don't burn things, right, when I'm supposed to be timing them. Okay, let's see how this guy is doing. Okay, you take your beautiful, oh, that lifted right up. Ooh, that was quite beautiful. Oh, I probably would have let it cook another minute or two if I'd have just peeked at it. You can see the beautiful color it has going. Right? So I want it to get a little bit more colorful texture to it. So I'm going to actually now set another alarm, this time for three minutes on that side. Pick up my phone, set it for three minutes and start. I should set it for four. We'll see. Okay. But so I've got the, we'll go back to the dressing. Okay, so I've got the veganaise, the garlic, and the water. And then I'm just mixing it up. You can use a whisk if you so choose. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, okay? And what I did the other day was I felt like it was missing, it was kind of a fatty dressing flavor. So I actually added lime to it, which turned out really good. Um, I like to take my lime, okay? and just like rub it, and if you wheel it like that, it, it makes it more juicy. So if you're using a lime or a lemon or an orange, it's perfect to do that. You know what I love? I love when I go into people's kitchens and they're so organized, like me doing this, like here's the things I need, and they're all right there within your circle. That way you don't have to flurry about and look, at, look for them. It makes life so much easier when you're organized based on what you're gonna use where. But so, I've got my handy dad need a little lime squeezer. Okay. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna cut my lime, and I'm going to put probably not quite a quarter of a squeeze, right? There we go. And that's gonna have a beautiful flavor. And then I like to use smoked salt. You can see I'm almost out of this one. I've got more though. A little smoked salt seasoning inside of there, and that'll add a beautiful, nice, delicious flavor. You could even spice it up. <gasps> Ooh, you know what would be good in here, Scott? What? Sriracha. Yes. Yeah. Right? So let's see how that tastes. I got my little spoon, we'll give that a taste. Mm. Oh, that is good. Woo! Mmm. Tasty. Okay, so that's good. Did you guys hear that? Let's see if you can see it. You see it? Okay, so that now means, what do we do? Turn it to low. Where people make the mistake is they start to hear it ticking, tick, 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 and then they turn it down. You want to get that little valve going, like it's a purring little kitten, okay, before you turn it down with potatoes, broccoli, artichokes, yellow squash, not yellow squash, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, right, all of those. So those are my, what's in there? Cauliflower mashed potatoes, and I'm simply going to take, and I'm going to now turn that down to low. Because all you need to know is you start on medium, the valve clicks real steady, and then you turn it to low, and then you go. 
Okay. Most things are done in half the time, or you can let them sit there for two or three hours and come back and they'll just be sitting there waiting for you. It's beautiful. So, got those potatoes on. I'm waiting for my alarm to go off. We've got our sauce complete. Okay. And, ooh, Scott, could you get me cilantro too? Don't you love it, you know, when you have people you can ask to help you with things and they do it with a big smile on their face. Let's see how big his smile is when he comes through the door. Hey, Scott. Oh, he went outside in the garage. Okay, so I'm now going to check this fish again. This beautiful, gorgeous, delicious piece of swordfish that I have going. Ooh, check that out. Oh, that came up nice. Oh my gosh, you guys. Check that out. Is that gorgeous and beautiful or what? Okay, so I'm just gonna let it go about another minute or two. So cilantro and uh, onion. Now that was three and a half minutes for those of you watching, like three minutes and I had 24 seconds left when I switched it. Okay, so now I'm going to cancel this alarm and I'm gonna set another one for about another three minutes. And I'm going to have my fish husband, he's a connoisseur, the best fish maker I've ever seen. Help me with that. So I'm going to now then finish up our beautiful little salad that I'm gonna serve this over the top with. Using my number five comb, put that inside, and I'll take my cabbage, okay? Cabbage is such a good food for you, okay? It can help fight off cancer. It is really inexpensive, and most of us buy it pre-graded because we think it's too hard to grade up, which really it is, unless you have a tool that helps you do it simply. Okay? So I've got my number five comb for my cabbage, and then I'm going to add to it ooh, some cilantro. Isn't that nice? Cilantro is a great blood cleanser. So I'll get a little cutting board out. There we go. Okay. And I'll just simply take, you can't do cilantro on the machine. Do you need to do it a little nice and I'll just kind of shave it off. Okay, dice that up. Really nice, this is gonna be such a good salad. Okay, I set a timer and I just turned it. You see my hands, I've got four hands now. You set it for three minutes on this side? On that side. Okay, set it for three minutes on this side too. So then I'll flip it in another one minute and 32 seconds. So another three minutes on that side. Okay, so there's a beautiful and salad. And turn it below and let it sit. Okay. Um, Hun, I think we have some shallots in the fridge also, if you want to grab those. Come here, Scott. Let's just see. What do you guys think? 50 50. 50 50. Okay, perfect. So I've got this, I'm just gonna throw these in there. So all I'll do is I'll cut those little ends off. There we go, and I'll give those a nice little choo, 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 choo. So chop into slices. Okay, just rock your knife and chop it. Throw that in there, so I've got, ooh, that's just gonna be beautiful. Purple onions would be really nice in there, but you can see how that salad is coming together beautifully. So if you wanna get me some sesame oil, Scott, this is an impromptu. I didn't plan on making this one for you guys. This is like a really simple salad. You could throw sesame seeds in there. Not sesame, but the, um, yeah, sesame seeds. And that would give, I think I'll do that. It'll give it a nice little texture. All right. So now my swordfish is 16 seconds away. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one for you guys. There we go. Okay. Actually, you know what? I think I don't need the sesame, Never mind. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, do you see that? Oh my gosh, I think this is this is just gonna be, I wish you were here to sample this. You'll have to post your pictures about how delicious it is. Here. When you guys make it, okay? Mix it up, a little garlic powder. Ooh, Scott's gonna add a little garlic powder to it. You know what garlic's good for? Helps boost your immune system, right? So you want to eat a lot of foods right now that Set are your alarm. keeping you healthy. I already did it. That are keeping you healthy, and um, you know a lot of nutritionally dense foods, a lot of vegetables. Vegetables are your friends, right? Because the vegetables help your body to maintain its alkalinity. And if we're alkaline, 
right? We live a lot longer. Disease thrives when we're acidic, so we want to watch out for things that cause us to be acidic, right? And, um, you know, just juice, take care of yourselves, eat lots of salads, and, uh, you know, just maintain your exercise, your breathing air outside. Tell ya, we went down, we live in San Diego, so we went down to the Hotel Del Coronado today, and it was stunning. It was the first day, and we didn't know this, and this, I'm just gonna say, always follow. Have you ever left the house, and right before you leave the house, something tells you to grab a hat, and you go, eh, I don't need that hat. And then you get somewhere, and you go, ooh, dang, I need that hat. So always listen when you think you need something and just grab it. So today we were just gonna go take a walk. And today's the first day they open the beaches. And so I said, well, I'll pack two towels and I'll bring us a little snack tray and I'll, we'll pack some, you know, jackets. And, and, I, and I just, you know, I had those thoughts and I just kept following them and I was so happy because it was the first day they opened the beach and you could sit on the beach, right? We got in the water and we just, I did a call, a work call from there. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but feel so much more relaxed like still getting from point A to point D B successfully but just in like less stress is involved and it's more relaxed and and it seems easier right and I didn't realize like I don't know if many of you have realized this but I didn't realize how much on the treadmill get from point A to point B right and it was fun but getting from point A to point B like I'm gonna get there it's so much more relaxed. Anyway, so I've got the fish. The fish is done. We're going to now whip up your potatoes for you guys. So I'm gonna grab it. Ooh, a nice little bowl. Those are way up there. I love these bowls. There's one, two, three beautiful double walled bowls that keep hot things hot and cold things cold. And they stack away so nice. When I see them in my cabinets, I've got them all lined up. I'm like, oh, this, is, this makes me happy, okay? So we've got our cauliflower mash ready to go. How long have we been going? 23 minutes. So that's about right, right? So I'm just gonna check them. Oh yeah, those are done perfectly. I'll show you guys. Wow. Depends on the texture that you like, you know, but I think those look really great. Oh, the fish is now done. Man, this is all coming together in 23 minutes. Can you believe we've done seared swordfish, cauliflower mash, made a coleslaw dressing and a, and a homemade dressing in 23 minutes. I like let that sink in, right? Quick, simple, and easy. Hey, hon, you wanna come check this fish? I think this fish is perfect, you guys. Um, yep, I, it's been this exact amount of time. It's coming apart. I guess how you check fish okay. is you break it. Oh, you guys. Oh my gosh. Check it out. I'm gonna take the fish out. Have a bite. I'm gonna have a bite. I bet you wish you were here to have a bite. Okay, I've got this one bite ready to go. I'm gonna turn my skillet off. Let's just see how it tastes, shall we? Oh. Mm. Oh, that is so amazing. Wow. I love swordfish. Wow. We go to the Brigantine for swordfish fish tacos. They got nothing on us. Okay, so our fish is done. Mm. Now, I'm gonna make the mashed potatoes for us. Cauliflower mashed potatoes, that is. And I learned this from my good friend, Linda Mayetta. Linda, if you're out there in the world, she is such a good, I love her food. And we did a cooking show when we were able to go into people's li homes live. And she made these cauliflower, and she, she used to just key, the guy was keto. So these are keto friendly, right? And she put gorgonzola, what was it? Gorgonzola cheese, blue cheese, butter, salt, and cream cheese in them. Wow. So this is kind of what I looked in my refrigerator. I was looking for this, there's this brie cheese that you can get and it's a mushroom brie cheese and it's fantastic. And so I like to use it sometimes when I'm making something creamy, but I didn't have that today. So the cheese that I'm gonna put in there for you guys, let me see, I have the wrapper, don't worry. I'll be right back with your wrapper, okay? And it's like a cream cheese, it's called Borsten. And so it's a garlics and fine herbs, and it'll add a nice flavor. I used about a quarter of the cheese in here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and dump that in here, okay? There we go, Boop. And then I'm going to take my favorite, I don't like to use dairy butter, so I use this vegan butter, it's called Mykonos. 
I just like it. It's, I found it's the best flavor. In fact, my chef Vinny was over here cooking with me and he brought his partner Lou. And he's like, Lou doesn't like fake butter. That's all I have. And he, he couldn't tell it was that good. So I've got my, my butter right here to go in with you guys. Okay, I'm just gonna put, I don't know, you may think that's a lot, but whatever. And then we're going to add to it, yes, a pre thing of garlic. I'm gonna drop that little guy in there. How easy is this? And then we're gonna take our cauliflower mash. Okay, this is coming along quite nicely. Put the handles down here, and you can see I've got it going in there. Let's move those up. And take the top off. Cauliflower mashed potatoes, Add that water, and in they go. There we go. Now I know why my husband calls me Lucille Ball. It's because things go everywhere. Lucy, you got some splaining to do. I know, Ricky, but I was just making cauliflower mash for you. Okay, so, you know, you got to have fun in life, right? I mean, if you're not having fun, nobody else is going to have fun. When you're having fun, people all around the world, wherever they are, have fun with you. There we go. So we got those ready to go. Set that there. Move that out of the way. And we'll just kind of whip those up. Does this look delicious or what, you guys? So we've got that. Oh, you should see the texture coming together. I'll show you here in just a second. And that, oh, the smell of the garlic. So good. Oh my golly. Wow. Oh, so then I'm going to finish them off with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Take my salt, put it in my hand. The reason you do it like this instead of going straight into it is because you can make it more even. Like when you do it like that, you can make it more even. Okay, so I got the salt and I'm going to put some fresh ground pepper. Mm. Are you guys getting hungry? I know I am. I know, right? Yum. Mm -hmm. So you get a little workout here too. You get your biceps going. Okay, there we go. Boom. Let me just get a little masher, a little whipper upper here, in my little spoon. And oh man, those look amazing. Let's see how they taste. You guys want to see how they taste? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a little bite. I'll blow on it because it's hot. Mm. Now, anybody that knows me, right? like if you're my family, you've known me, I cannot fake deliciousness. Like I am one of the pickiest eaters that you will ever encounter. <laughs> so if something was not good, you wouldn't get the face. You'd get the, ew. like I couldn't hide it. That was delicious. And it's just me and Scott eating, so don't worry that I'm stirring it with the spoon I taste it on. If I was cooking for somebody else, I would not do that. So, got that going. There we go. Deliciousness. So let's have a little plate, shall we, and see how this looks. So, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take and wipe off my little counter here. If I had a kitchen elf, my kitchen elf would come and do it. That's a husband. Right, ladies, kitchen elves, husbands. So. Then we've got our plate, so we'll grab that. Okay. And I'll take my little salad, which I am going to dress with this beautiful deliciousness that I made. Now this is one I had the other day, but I'm gonna mix the two together because I don't wanna waste it. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna put that straight over the top of this dressing here, this salad, very nice, okay. And we'll give it a nice little toss. Purple onions would have added a really nice color to this. I think I had some in the fridge, but that's okay. You guys will get the picture. Okay, so we've got this going. Put that right down there on the bottom. Okay, quite beautiful. I've never really been a plater, but I've been watching all these cooking shows, and I tell you, when they plate the food, oh, it's just so beautiful, and it makes me so, it's just delicious looking. Okay, take these little potatoes here, and I'll put a little side of those on there. It's a pretty white plate, which is why I said the purple onions look really nice. Hey, Scott, come here. Okay, and then we'll take our 
steak, beautiful steak. Okay, anything you'd like to add to the plating? You can see it's kind of got some juices coming off, which is why you don't want to plate right away. And you just take your steak and you just lay it right over the top, right, dear? See. Right, check that out. Oh. Mm. Who would like to come over for dinner? Does that look good? All right, guys, so any questions you have, post them and I will answer them. Um, if you we, we sign up for Chef Vinny's class to make the chapino with us, we're going to do it live and we'll send out the ingredients so you can get the ingredients and, and cook along with us. And we're also that day making an arugula salad with um, strawberries, slivered almonds, and a fresh balsamic dressing. So go to Dream Life Total Wellness and sign up there. And if you have any questions or anything, we're here always to help you and help you and answer them. So this is Melissa Curry signing out. I appreciate you being on the call today. Bye for now.